Wendy Vitter was nominated by President Trump to be a federal judge in the United States District Court for the Eastern District of Louisiana. Now, during her confirmation hearing on Wednesday, Senator Richard Blumenthal asked Vitter if she believes Brown v. Board of Education was correctly decided. Now, Brown v. Board of Education was a landmark U.S. Supreme Court case that established that segregation in schools was unconstitutional. So she refused to deliver an answer in the affirmative or in the negative. Do you believe that Brown versus Board of Education was correctly decided? Senator, I don't mean to be coy, but I think I get into a, a difficult um, a different difficult area when I start commenting on Supreme Court decisions which are correctly decided and which I may disagree with. Again, my personal political or religious views, I would set aside. That is Supreme Court precedent. It is binding. If I were honored to be confirmed, I would be bound by it, and of course I would uphold it. Do you believe it was correctly decided? And again, I would respectfully um, not comment on what could be my boss's ruling, the Supreme Court. I would be bound by it. And if I start commenting on I agree with this case or don't agree with this case, I think we get into a slippery slope. I can understand that certain judges have to sidestep their own beliefs to mm -hmm. accommodate the Constitution, mm -hmm. like religious beliefs. That's different. The question was about segregation. Just point blank point and blank. simple. Segregation in schools, do you believe that the decision was decided correctly? So what beliefs is she sidestepping? This was not a softball question. I call it a softball. Yeah, he called it a I softball. Said, I, I was like, how the hell couldn't she answer a softball question like that? And then no, you, no, no. You, you, you responded to me. This was a T-ball <laughs> question. This was just set on the T. Just, just have a whack at it. It's not going to be moving at all. This is a stationary target. And she completely whiffed. She admitted herself. I mean, like, she didn't say, no, I don't believe in it. Or, or no, I believe it was decided incorrectly. But really, by what she didn't say... She's revealing. She revealed that, yeah, she believes in segregation. That's the, that's why she doesn't want to answer. If you believe that segregation should not take place in United States, United States schools, then it would be very simple for you to say, absolutely not. Or, or no, it would be because the question was, do, do you, you believe? Agree? Yeah. Do you believe it was decided correctly? You would be very emphatic with saying, hell yeah. If you did believe and you did agree that that was the correct decision. But if you didn't, but. No. Then you would have to no, construct no, just, some just, kind of if you not, not answer just that. that like gets you out of the question. If you didn't and then did not want to reveal that, yes. you would have to, like you said, construct some sort of answer that would allow you to kind of scuttle <laughs> out. <laughs> As a judge, a current judge or potential judge, is it like out of the ordinary to give opinions on certain court rulings? Is that an unusual position to be in even publicly? No. See, this is something that see, she she's making it seem like there are no dissenting opinions in court cases when there are always dissenting opinions, especially with the US Supreme Court. Like all of them, the, the nine justices, nah, dog, it's always, they don't it's have the same zero. idea. It's always nine zero, dog. <laughs> it's like it's like on 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 very important cases, it's virtually never nine zero because they have clear differences and when they do get to a place where it's, you know, where it's, where, where it's five, four or six, three or whatever like that. There is a dissenting opinion that oh. is offered by the people on the bench that are like, no, I don't agree with this whatsoever. And I'm going to tell you why. So if they can tell you why, why does Wendy Vitter feel that she can't do that? So not only is there dissenting votes, there's always going to be commentary surrounding why they dissented yep. and why they those votes um, contradicted those of their fellow justices, and they explain it very. They 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 craft these dissenting opinions very carefully. They're often very long. Why can't you do the same? If you do not believe in well, no. If you do believe in segregation, then you can tell the American people why you do. <laughs>
Uh, <laughs> no, she can't. <laughs> she just did, though. I'm, she just I'm, did. Well, not directly. I mean, how does that look? I, I personally believe segregation is okay. But the Constitution compels me to do the right thing, so I can't rule in favor of my belief. That would not be a good look. <laughs> But okay, but see, this is the problem, okay? I mean, well, well, damn. (laughs) If you believe in segregation, that is the problem. But this is another problem, okay? By having that viewpoint, you said that, you know, we we heard her herself say that, hey, I'm bound by the ruling, and I'm going to uphold that. You know, I'm going to put my personal opinions by the side. I'm going to put my religious views by the side. I'm going to uphold the the Constitution. I'm going to uphold these these verdicts or, or, or these rulings, right? The problem with that is that the district that she's going to be serving, the Eastern District of Louisiana, includes New Orleans. New Orleans has a population that has, uh, well, the the majority of the population is black. I think it's about 60% black. Mm -hmm. So she's going to be serving this community. Now, do you think it... Do, do you think her personal opinions might show up from time to time in court cases? Do you think that maybe if there's a case regarding discrimination or even forget what the court case is, <laughs> if there is just a black person on one side and a white person on the other side, can we be confident that she's going to look at this case objectively and just and, and just leave it there? Or will her own feelings about like her own worldview come into play. Well, we see, uh, you know, the worldview of judges come into play all the time. So they're why? people, right? Because they're people. And I think that's the issue with kind of, I think that's the issue right there. Because, you know, I, I, I would want a judge who has kind of, uh, I guess, uh, taking account into certain things in society and has developed their own worldview mm-hmm. that matches up with what is written in the Constitution. You see what I'm saying? And yeah. what matches up uh, according to how they're supposed to rule. Mm-hmm. That's kind of my kind of uh, utopia right there. Right. That their worldview would actually match up and they, there wouldn't be any conflict. They, you wouldn't have to sidestep some bigotry or you wouldn't have to <laughs> sidestep some belief in order to make the right ruling because those two mm. things are always going to be in conflict because you're always still at some sort of mental tug of war justifying why you have your own personal belief and that is going to come into play mm-hmm. in court at some point. We're not saying that it's going to come into play all the time, no, not all the time. but at some point it is. Yep. And that is very troublesome, especially when you account for the fact the community that she's going to be servicing. Now, during this confirmation hearing, there were also other topics that were brought up. Uh, abortion was to- uh, was a topic that was brought up and she is self-admittedly pro-life. OK, so from, you know, my personal opinion is that, you know, if you are personally pro-life i don't have a problem with that there are many people that are pro-life it's when you try to project that feeling on everybody else and try to say that well no this should be illegal you you don't have a right to do that it's it's not your life you don't don't have a say in this you're actively uh promoting things like punishment for people who get abortions you're actively promoting that like things like parenthood be shut down Mm -hmm. then when it becomes active it no longer is a personal belief those beliefs uh have now translated to actions and that that's a problem right so on the subject of abortion she was fielding questions about it uh and this is this is uh per uh npr uh in particular vitter sought to distance herself from a brochure she had appeared to endorse while leading a panel at a pro-life conference in 2013 the panel was called abortion hurts women and the brochure promoted a variety of unsubst unsubst oh my gosh unsubstantiated claims linking birth control pills to breast cancer, cervical and liver cancers, and violent death. (laughs) Okay. Now, the violent death aspect of that, I'm pretty sure whoever is seeing that is like, well, hold on. How the hell do you connect birth control pills to violent death, right? Okay, again, so this is part of um, NPR. So 
The brochure alleged that women who take oral contraceptives prefer men with similar DNA and that women in these partnerships have fewer sexual relationships leading to more adultery and understandably violence. Wait a second. So, okay, okay, okay. I'm trying to follow the line. Birth control leads to more freaky deaky. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Freaky deaky. You see a freak now. Uh-huh. She looks to have more, more um, sex. Right. Um, then that leads to um, abusive relationships. Abusive relationships. Then death. <laughs> yes. Violent death. Violent death. At the hands of an abuser. That's what this brochure that she was touting claimed that this 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 is the woman that wants to be a a, a federal court judge. So again, again, this goes to her rationale. That's the point. This goes to her ability to use her personal rationalization. And I think that's important. I don't think I, I just think it's very difficult to separate the two. You can't sit there and say, I'm going to. Uh, rule using mm-hmm. a, a very uh, sensible rationale, but yet <laughs> it's obvious you I don't have, a have that of displaying very faulty rationale. Exactly, you see what I'm saying? I just at this conference in 2013, these were her words. Okay, go to Dr. Angela's website, and Dr. Angela is a uh, Dr. Angela Angela Lanfranchi. She's the one that was that authored the um, that authored the brochure. So she says, go to Dr. Angela's website, Breast Cancer Prevention Institute, download it. And at your next physical, you walk into your pro-life doctor and say, have you thought about putting these facts or this brochure in your waiting room? Each one of you can be the pro-life advocate to take that next step. That's what you do with it. <laughs> I, I, don't, I can't, I'm not even making this up, right? So on the brochure. Uh, Democratic Senator Maisie Hirono from Hawaii, I believe, she said, quote, judges have to apply common sense. Does it even make sense to you that people who use birth control pills would be more likely to be assaulted or murdered? So after a pause, Vitter conceded, no, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> and this, I mean, this this is crazy. This is absolutely promiscuity. Leads to cra- <laughs> That's what I. That's pretty much what it's saying. Yes, you you, you don't want to become pregnant. Well, birth control leads yes. to more. I'm gonna take steps to make sure that I don't become pregnant, and that's gonna lead to me choosing a partner who's violent automatically and will, and will kill but me automatically. I, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting to see how this confirmation goes, man. I'm just I'm just waiting, man. Re- Republicans, go ahead. Tell the, t- tell the country who you are. If they haven't already. But this will be very blatant. Okay. There's n- this. This will be undeniable who they are, as a Unde- group. Undeniable too. Because <laughs> when you're saying that, you th- you're, you're, you're kind of suggesting that, <laughs> like, that there's some question right now. <laughs> that, no, you're suggesting that their supporters will be like, "Damn it!" Like, look at who we support. That, like, you think they're coming to this aha moment? This is who we've been supporting. We can't. We can't stand for this. Not all of them, but. Just like just just like in uh, what was it the third district in Illinois yeah. the, 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 the damn Nazi, the damn Nazi. who is the oh, uh, the nominee yeah, for the, the nominee Republican for Party the, now yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of Republicans that lived in that area were like damn we, we sure enough can't vote for this clown because this dude is a Nazi man he hates no nah, hell no we can't vote for him so no doubt they voted for Democrats or they just stayed home so I have no I have no doubt that there are Republicans that aren't racist and they don't believe in segregation and stuff like that. So if they actually saw that coming from their party, like approving of that, you 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 couldn't just like you you couldn't just like oh man, I didn't they didn't catch me I didn't even see it. You you uh you sound a little too optimistic. <laughs> <laughs>